Welcome to St. Luke's Chapel. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for being here. Today we pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Praise the Lord who 
Welcome to St. Luke's Chapel. Those who are in chapel with us are all cordially invited to receive the sacraments. And those at home may want to grab a glass of wine or some juice, crackers, some bread, and share in the sacraments as we receive them here in the chapel. God's love is universal and is everywhere, so enjoy it at home. Let us pray. God, we come to you in this hour of worship to give thanks for all that you have given us as we seek forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. We ask that you guide us, guard us, and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. to church in the winter because she says church is a winter sport and uh, so as long as she comes that's all I care about. Um, in our prayers we remember to pray for the pulse of the souls of all those who have died in the hope of the res resurrection and we pray for the sick and the suffering especially for John Sorgi who had complications after kidney surgery. How is he doing, Sandy? Not well. Not well? I believe he is still there, but he had surgery for the first time. Oh dear. Three trips to Syracuse. <clears throat> That's not good. So our prayers are certainly with John and his family. Are there any other prayer petitions that should be looked at? Anne? Oh, Joe, did I put him in? I think I had him in on the online one, but how is Joe doing? Well, um, he's still, he's still, he's still um, comfortable. Did they decide what it was? Is that what? Okay, very good. That's right. That's Anne's husband, Joe, who has been going through abdominal issues. 
So he's dead. You know, she's done everything now. He, he's well, he's cognitive, he's, he's as feisty as ever, but he keeps doing that rotation between home, the ER, rehab, home. I mean, he's there now. I think his diagnosis is just a, he's just a feisty old Irish guy. Feisty old Irish guy. What's his name again? James Foster. James Foster? 95. 95 years old. I sort of wish I hadn't burned the candle at the wrong end. Okay. Is it John Foster? James Foster. James Foster. <laughs> Summer has been hectic. I, I think I figured it out in the last three months I've done 15 funerals. And uh, I guess I'm just at that age group. I don't know. But it gets a little frustrating. And our world is a little frustrating. I was thinking on the way to church today, what I might say. And, of course, I always encourage you to develop a faith of your own and a God of your understanding. It's the God of your understanding and the faith of your own that will see you through and will automatically become an example for other people. Whenever you travel by air, one of the first things they tell you is if there should be an incident and the oxygen masks should drop <laughs> other than being scared to death you should put your own oxygen mask on first so that you'll be able to help others so that you will remain conscious to help others and i think it's that way with faith you have to create your own faith for your own survival, spiritually, physically. I think many people that don't have faith fill that emptiness with fear. And faith, which is God's gift of love to us, helps replace that fear. And God tells us to have faith. I can't tell you how your faith should be. Only you know how your faith should be. And our cultural and societal things may tend to lead us into temptation. And it's our faith that may lead us back. To a better understanding. I did a graveside service this afternoon and we were talking about how all the people my age learned to swim in the creek. At the dam in Cander, at Smitty's Pond on Gridleyville Crossroads, how you'd jump off that bridge that seemed to be 150 feet high, which was probably 15 feet high. <laughs> and there was a swimming hole. As you turn to go up Prospect Valley Road, there used to be a swimming hole and a little picnic area there. And my twin sister and I were in a, an inner tube, which was before they had store-bought um, swim things. You had an old inner tube that had two or three patches on it, and you hoped it kept the air up. But we were around five years old, and we flipped the tube and went underwater. And my mother was panicked because she couldn't swim. And she was so sure if she would have waded out into the water, she would have drowned. 
So my father came out and hauled us out of the deep. And he taught us a lesson that day. And it's a lesson that even though I was five years old, I have remembered and used it more times in my life than any other lesson. Only panicked people drown. If you don't panic, and you can stay even in the roughest current, protect yourself so you don't get knocked out. But if you stay in the roughest current, all those rough currents will lead to still waters. All those rough currents will lead to a lagoon where you can save yourself. I have never forgotten that lesson. And when I see myself panicking in a situation, I say to myself, keep your head, be calm, ride the current, the rough waters, and you will find peaceful waters. And I look back on some of the things that we have panicked over. And as I look back on them, I can remember them, but they no more had that panic in my life that they may have had at one time. So try to remember, only panicked people drown. Stay conscious. Stay aware of the world around you. And be strengthened by your own faith. Not the faith of somebody else. So I was talking a couple weeks ago about sin. I think if we do things against the commandments, that's a sin we might have to seek forgiveness for. But there's so many other kinds of sin that are imposed on us through other people, not through God. People tell me that certain things I do are sinful. I enjoy going to a casino once in a while. For many people, that's a sin. For me, it's fun. And I think, you're missing out on a lot by thinking that's a sin. And we have to listen to our own spirit and the spirit of God that dwells in us because by doing that, we are aware of our wrongdoings. Don't let another person impose sin on you that may not be a sin. Let your conscience be your guide. And don't panic when you do go wrong. Your faith will put you back on the right track. Many years ago, nearly 40 years ago, I drank in excess. And I quit drinking because of one thing. I went to a bar with a cousin of mine, and it was during the year that um, you could drink. They changed it from the age of 18 to the age of 19 for one year. And we were at a, this country bar where we should never have been, and I'm glad God was with us because we got out of there. And the, I went to the bathroom, come back, and the bartender said, is, is he 19? He says he's 19. And I was sure that he was still 18. I said, well, if he says he's 19, he must be 19. I know. He probably is, Phil, because you would never lie to me. The next morning as I awakened, I thought, if that's going to make me lie, I'm not doing that anymore. And I never drank again over 39 years ago because I knew it was wrong. The Spirit of God within me told me. 
I keep waiting for the Spirit of God to tell me how sinful chicken wings are. <laughs> what a horrible person little Debbie really is. Some of you may be in that same boat. We know as human beings because the Spirit of God dwells in us and we become an example of that. Christ wanted us to be his followers, disciples, but he wanted us to take the knowledge and the wisdom and the education that we get from his life on how to be decent people out to be an example and through that example we become apostles, teachers teachers of Christ. I've discovered in my life uh, be only because I've had encounters that if somebody tells me that they are a Christian, I have to observe to see if they really are. I don't think you have to tell anyone you're a Christian. I don't think that anything but your actions will show that you're a Christian. I did a funeral once for uh, an aunt of mine, my father's sister, and I shared it with a fundamentalist minister. And at the graveside, he came over to me and said, I think it's wonderful that your family is able to accept you. And I didn't say a word, because if I would have said what I thought, I wouldn't have been a good Christian at all. He would have known I was from Candor. <laughs> His judgment of me as a fellow clergyman, I have to consider whether that's Christian or not. Whether any judgment of anybody is Christian. As I talked in the last couple weeks, God created all of us in his own image. He tells us that in the first chapter of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. So as we look at everyone around us and we form opinions and judgments, we're questioning God's work. We're questioning God's work. And that's something that I think is sinful. But we all have our own prejudices. And it's very hard to understand when we are supposed to love everybody. Because there are people that we have to question whether we love them or not. But I've searched the Bible over, and it never says anywhere in there that we have to like everybody. We're supposed to love everybody because God created us. And through him, we have our being. I always marvel at the mysteries of faith. I always marvel at the mysteries of faith. How something happens where a person's in one place and another person traveling to another place gets um, in a blizzard and gets snowed in and they meet and they end up getting married. You know, uh, that's divine interventions with Mother Nature as an accomplice. My father and mother met at a dance in a little Hamlet called Speedsville. Mm -hmm. The people in Candor don't even know where it is. Nine miles over the hill. They met at a dance. Shortly after my father came home from the war. And the rest is history. They met at a dance, ended up getting married, having their four children. And I'm here with you people, and think how our paths crossed. 
There are mysteries in life that we can't explain. My father always said he was shell-shocked from the war, and he didn't even realize what he'd done until five years later. But he just said that to annoy my mother. Think of the things in your life where God has participated. The things in your life where God has participated. And only God himself, speaking through your spirit and aligning his spirit with your spirit, has brought you to where you are today. There are many things that we can see where God has participated. I look back at Phyllis and I falling out of the inner tube and going under water. It wasn't that incident where God spoke, but God spoke through my father when he told me only panicked people drowned. My father would be amazed that I remembered that all these years, 70 years later. He'd be more amazed that I mentioned him in church. <laughs> Take your spirit and know that it's worthy to be here at this time. Don't ever let anybody tell you that your spiritual path is wrong. Take your spirit because your spirit is the spirit of God as you interpret it. But I'm convinced that we're put in this beautiful place that humanity is trying to destroy. We're, we're put in this beautiful place to enjoy it. If we look at where we live, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. And yet we're not happy. A day like today, I was doing a funeral at 1 o'clock. Pouring rain till I got to the cemetery, walked to the grave site, and one of the People said to me, I think Grandma Lucy is going to make it stop raining. Within seven minutes, it quit raining. And knowing Grandma Lucy, I'm sure she made it stop raining <laughs> with God's help. We come together here on Saturdays in a bond of love. We don't have to like each other. I, I don't know if there's anyone here I don't like, but if I do, you'll know it. Um, we'll try to correct it. That's all we can do. But I love all of you. Each one of you has a special spot in my heart. And I know I have a special spot in each of your hearts. And the knowledge of that is called love. So let's love ourselves. As my, as my message this morning ended with, love your neighbor as yourself. In that commandment God gave us through Jesus Christ, love your neighbor as yourself, he was the first one to say, put your own oxygen on before you try to help anybody else. Love yourself first and then share that love in the world around us. So let us share in the sacrament that God gave us that, that is talked about in the gospel today. It didn't mean that we have to eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. It meant we had to be nourished by his spirit. That's what it's all about. So let's share in the sacraments. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and say together, the Apostles' Creed.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious violence, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How I said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The alms basin is in the back of the church for those who would like to make a donation. Thank you. Star for Joy Hymns number 231, verses 1, 2, and 3.
for all that you have given us, for our family and our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. We pray for the people in the war-torn areas of the world, the Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, Palestine. We pray for those at the southern border of our own country. We trust that your wisdom and will will help us to resolve that issue. We pray for the sick and the suffering. We pray especially for your servants, John Sorge, Joe Frisbee, that you will lead the doctors to a satisfactory conclusion so that their health may continue to support their love in your world. We pray for your servant James Foster, that as he goes through trials and tribulations from aging, from life, be with him and strengthen him. His strong faith will be his guide. We trust your faith that you will touch all of us with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for your servant, Robert Norris. We trust your faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together, let us confess our sins unto Almighty God, most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. In chapel, let us nod to each other in peace. At home, embrace those you love with your peace. peace.
Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray.